Hello, and welcome back to Superbooth 2019. This is Blake Angelos from Yamaha here with the Modi X. Now, what I want to show today are just some of the things that I love about this instrument. I think, you know, you're going to see a lot of live performances, and, um, and, and those are awesome, but I think it's helpful, especially for people that may have purchased this instrument, could, to kind of have an idea of, of, of some of the cool things that you can do with it, some of the cool little shortcuts, especially for editing. I'll talk about, um, I'm going to show some of the stuff with the FM engine alone, um, with some great... Uh, um, performances that are created by my friends at Easy Sounds, by my friend Hans Peter Hinkel, um, that are th th really amazing sounds that just use the FM engine. Um, and then I want to kind of talk about things like the uh, the vocoder and how to use it with something like Cubase. I actually have an entire project I created, and I'll kind of end with this project that I created. And I'll talk about how. Um, how, how a workflow is kind of realized with this instrument. Um, it's a very flexible interest, instrument, and it all kind of happens in this thing called the performance mode. So the first thing I'll do, I'll just play some, some, just some sounds here first. I think it's important to, 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 to play like piano sounds because this instrument has incredible piano sounds on board, and then plus with some of the free things that we have, like the Bosendorfer, well, I'll just play. So the first piano I want to play is just this four-part um, performance called CFX Concert. Um, it, it, is it a, it, it's amazing how just dynamic this piano is, and a lot of it is because it uses four simultaneous parts to create this piano. Now, a single part could be a sound all its own, and I'll play some stuff that's just single parts, but this one actually uses four parts at the same time to create the entire instrument. So I'll play this right now just to... So super dynamic. That's the first thing that I like about this. I'm not using, this is my vocoder mic. Um, I love that I can play super soft and get this instrument to speak at this level. So how is this being made? Well, I have the instrument in front of me, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mute out parts so you hear exactly how this works. So there's a nice little mute solo button that I can go through here, and I can touch mute, and I'll mute out the first, or the, the parts two, three, and four. So I only have part one here. So if I play soft, you can still hear part one, right? But if I hit it hard, nothing happens. That's because I've muted the other part. So you get an idea. I'm building this piano. Each part takes the, the, the power of just a single engine for just the soft layer. But if I hit hard, nothing. So now I'm going to go to the next part, and I'll mute out part one. Now I just have part two sounding, but there's nothing when I play soft. But when I play hard, that's the fortissimo layer but not the soft layer. So if I unmute parts one and two, now I have pretty much everything here, except this part, as I move up to the top, there's nothing sounding here. Well, that's because on a grand piano, there's dampers that are open up there. They're open strings. So the dampers are here when the piano plays, but so they created a very specific sample just for this high open string sound. So I'm building this piano. So now I have parts one, two, and three sounding. And I almost have the entire sound, but there's one part that I'll just solo here. And this is part four. So what is part four? Just the key off sample. That little detail of the sample, or of the, of the sound of the piano, that's so important is just that little. So now, unmuting each of these parts, or unsoloing this part, that's how we get this piano. So I call this a single instrument multi-part performance. So it's just an idea of how this instrument works. That's one way you can use it. Another way you can use it, well, actually, I want to move on just to, I want to play a second piano here. This is the Bosendorfer piano. So first, I'll play the CFX, and then I'll switch to the Bosendorfer piano, but we have seamless sound switching, four part, up to four parts seamlessly switched to the other part. So I've just moved to the Bosendorfer, and you can hear a totally different sound with this instrument.
much more resonant piano with this guy. Now the second sound I'll play is the bosonover, but this is what I love about this instrument is that you can take these sounds and go to entirely different, different places. So this is called Ambient Trailer. This is part of the Bosendorfer library that you can download for free from Yamaha. Just go to our website, or whatever country you're at, and go and download it. And this one I love, and I'm, I'll play this in you know, with this song that I have in here. But I love this because what it does is it gives this cool pad sound by using some of the very powerful DSP. Now, as I move up the super knob to the very top, what it's doing is it's pulling the dry signal completely out, and all I'm left with is, the, is just the process signal. And it's this very compelling, rich pad sound. And if I pull the super knob back a little bit, I can bring the dry signal back in, but still have a lot of that cool. Absolutely one of my favorite sounds in this instrument. Okay, the next sound I want to play, and I'm going to play just one, you know, two more emulative sounds. This one is called Seattle Sections, one of my favorite sounds from the montage that comes over into the Modi X. And what this does is this is seven parts with a widespread orchestra. So it's very, it sounds very hard left for the strings in the low end. The strings in the high end are over on the right side. So it's a very big, you know, but a very dynamic string sound. But as I move the super knob over, what it does is it shrinks the size of the orchestra to a small, maybe quartet, maybe eight string players, and changes the stereo field and moves it in. All of these are simultaneous um, uh, controls that move these different things, like pan positioning, like effect processing, at the same time. A macro control, that's what the super knob is. So as I move it all the way over, And you hear the stereo field kind of come into the center. As I move it the other direction, you hear the stereo field widen and then an entire orchestra morphs. That's an amazing sound. I love that emulativeness. This is great for that. So another sound I like to just play very quick is one called pop, pop Horns Dynamic Shake. As I hit it hard, I get the, 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 the Dwight or the whatever you call that. <laughs> Vibrato. Shake is what it is, sorry. It's early here in Berlin for me. But then you also have this, a doit. Amazing, I play this sound in a, in a store or any, people will run over and go, what is that that you're playing? Another one, now this is a single part in here, but this is just a trombone spell. So this gives you an idea of what you can do with just one part, just this very dynamic. So a very dynamic trombone swell. But what I can do with this, since I have one part, I have actually seven more parts that I can control simultaneously. So what I like to do with this guy is just touch on a part in the touch screen and add some strings. Very quickly, I can just go to the string section. I find something in the ensemble. Here's something called ballad strings. Now I have with this... So I still have the super knob controlling the trombone, but then I can add a part. I can add other parts as well to this. If I wanted to say, well, how about woodwinds? I can just touch here. It drops me into a category search mode. I touch woodwind. I'm looking in here, and I just kind of look in here, and I want to say, oh, I want woodwinds, and I want something, maybe a woodwind quartet to add to this as well. So with the super knob all the way down, the trombone section is still down. It's not swelled out, but I have this.
So very easy to build things really quickly. It's a very easy to use interface. So now I'm gonna go a little bit differently and I'll start talking more about the synthesis part of it. This one's called dark modulation pad. And what this guy does is this is just a single element. So what's a single element? Parts can be up to eight elements. So a single part can be its own sound, but a single element can be its own sound as well. And that's what this, I'll change keys with this one. I have some dynamic controls here to control things like filter. So let's say what I want to do is I want to take the super knob and I want the super knob to be my filter control. How do I do that? It's a matter of dropping quickly into edit mode and selecting that single filter. So I'm looking at a single part. Now I'm looking at a single element in that part. It's a, it's, a, it's a hierarchical scheme. Elements make parts, parts make performances. That's how this instrument works. So I go in here and I touch on filter, and I have what says LPF 24A. That's a 24, four pole low pass, 24 dB roll off per octave, four pole low pass filter, analog style. I could also, do, there's one that says D that's more of a digital filter. So here I can turn the filter cutoff frequency here. But you notice that when I touch any parameter that can be assigned to a control, there's a little control assign light that lights up right on the front. So what does that mean? That means if I touch that, a dialog box comes up and says, what do you want to activate the source controller to assign that? Well, how about just a super knob? I've now assigned the, the, the filter control to the super knob. It's very powerful you can do this. You can assign insertion effects, of which you have two per part. I can assign those to be controlled by the super knob with also things being controlled, like filter settings um, with the super knob simultaneously, different motions. But that's a very cool thing about being able to just interact with this instrument. Another thing I like to do with this instrument, when you're dealing with synthesizers, since I have a single element here, one thing I like to do is I'll be in the edit mode here and I have this element selected. Let's say I want to have two elements, the same element, and I just want to detune one of them. So I, if I touch shift and edit, and touch shift, edit, and it says to me element one to element two, I can copy elements. So now I have two elements here. And if I go into the pitch area, I can just detune each of these two elements a little bit. So I get this kind of more... You hear the detuning of the two elements now. Copy one. I could copy all the way across and have all eight elements with the same waveform and detune them all. So you can really come up with these kind of CS80 style textures with this instrument as well. The next thing I want to show here um, is some of the FM stuff. And I'll play a couple of them too. And these are both from Easy Sounds from the FM Experience. You can get that at easysounds.com. These are great packs that you can get for the montage in Modi X. This one is all FM, and this one's called Mr. Crush Hop. The thing I love about this is even the drums are being generated by the FM engine.
super. I mean, that's amazing to me that that's all FM. FM, people don't realize just how deep FM truly is and, and the wide, diverse range of sounds you can get out of it. This one here, I know this one's by, by Hoppe here, and he's going to come on later on to show you some very cool FM stuff um, later on in the day, but check this one out. This one's called Equanda. And this one kills me because what happens with this is when you turn the super knob all the way over, it activates what's called beat repeat, which is one of the most powerful effects. If you get a chance, later on in about a month, we'll have a podcast we did with Richard Devine where he talks about beat repeat effect as being like one of, one of his go-to effects when he programs stuff. So this one, again, is all FM, and this is just, this is, I don't know, just check it out. It's one of the coolest sounds. Such an awesome, all FM, really amazing. Okay, so two other things I want to show. One of them, there's also an envelope follower in this instrument. So what that means, I can do stuff where I can take any audio input, and what it happens is the envelope that is generated by the audio input, the sound follows that, 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 the, the envelope created by the audio input, or another part, hence envelope follower. So what I did with this one is I have this pad here. Right, you hear the pad? Well, now when I switch to another scene, I've engaged a arpeggio that has a drum groove to it. The drum groove is providing the envelope that this will follow, and you'll hear it, and it's gonna, actually, I have it assigned to filter, so. So envelope follower, very cool effect in here. Last one I'll show you is the vocoder. So the vocoder, generally when you think vocoder, you think the microphone, which is what I will be using in a second to it, as, as the modulator that you use to power the vocoder. But you can also use another part to trigger the vocoder, kind of like this. So you get the idea, a vocoder. But I also have a vocoder here as well. So with my A to D input, I can use the vocoder just like this. This is the bass in the bass in the bass in the Now the thing I love about the vocoder in this, um, in this case is I can set up different scenes that have um, multiple iterations of the vocoder. So in this one, I have just one part. Just one part right here is the vocoder. Right? But then on... Part three, I have the vocoder actually doing a bunch of, uh, of harmonization, so I have things stacked in fourths. So you can come up with really cool, interesting lead sounds. If you check out Moira. She does an amazing vocoder later on today. Make sure you watch that one. So now, the last, last, last thing I want to show is with Cubase. So if you can switch me over to Cubase here. There we go. That's awesome. Um, was it always there behind me? Okay, good. So, all right. So I want to show you how I like to work with this instrument. Because remember, I've been talking about different parts. 
different performances, different ways to use them. So again, some performances can be single instrument, multi-part performances. Some, in, some, some performances can be basically like a multi-timbral situation where I have drums, bass, guitar, a piano, and so on in a single performance. So how do I use, when I go past 16 parts, this instrument can't be held by just 16 MIDI channels. How do I do a, so I use this thing called Montage Connect. So what I've done here is I've rendered all of my parts because Montage and Modix, this Modix Connect is what I meant because I'm using Modix. We also have Montage Connect. But because I'm, I'm using this instrument and in, in, we're using multiple instances of performances, I want to have a way where I can, I can create my MIDI tracks and then when I have them where I want, I want to be able to render those tracks. So what I do is I record my MIDI tracks and once I'm done with them, there's all my MIDI tracks right here and I have them all ready to go. So once I have them rendered, I will, uh, I'll, I'll mute those tracks, I'll keep them in the MIDI folder still and then I go over here to Montage, or sorry, Modix Connect, and that's what Modix Connect looks like. And you notice the last sound that it saw there was the uh, was um, trombone swell. But what if I want to capture that vocoder performance? I just simply go like this, and now it's the vocoder. Or if I want to maybe select this 88 case key hard, let's say, now it's now it's my 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 uh, time piano sound that I'm going to use in this song. So I I grab these sounds, I capture them, I sequence them, right? I store them inside of Cubase like this. I have my nice media bay where I've stored some of my performances. So let's say I did a MIDI sequence, I rendered it, and then I went back and I said, oh, I had a wrong note or I want to change something. Well, I just recall it here, redo the MIDI track and re-render it and put it back in. So that's the workflow that you can use for this. That means I can take one um, performance that has drums and bass and guitar and get my, my stuff together there, right? And then I want to use Seattle Sections, a seven-part performance. Well, what if I've already... No, I just, I've already rendered that. I play to the rendered tracks. I record Seattle Sections, which is what I did with this. If you were to count how many parts were in here that I used in my song, it's like, I don't know, maybe 25 parts. But that's the beauty of having an instrument that has a built-in audio and MIDI interface. I can record two channels of audio from this main stereo outs, but I have an extra eight individual outputs. So one of the things I did in here when I was creating this song is I recorded five parts simultaneously as audio, as discrete lanes in here of audio, and it makes the workflow process a lot faster as well. It's very cool, and it's, it, it all is seen by Cubase in here. So without any further, the last thing I want to do here is I'll kind of play what I created here using just the Modi X. Everything you hear is all Modi X, all rendered parts. Now I've obviously use some of the DAW um, things in here, like some of the effects, you know, because I have that capability here. But that is, you know, that's the beauty of this instrument. It's a different way to work than just having a standalone interface in your controller. It's an integrated system, computer, instrument. Pfft, really cool. So now I'm going to stop talking, and I'm just going to use the vocoder now and some other things. So... It has the most futuristic sound you can possibly get out of a city. It's going to go into outer space. This mother ship will take you there. This mother ship will take you there.
So, so thank you very much for watching Super Bowl 2019 from Gamma Blake. Keep watching, there's a lot more to come. Thanks. <laughs>